Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another New Fangled Motion Picture Show. Uh, tonight, we're going to be reviewing Starship Troopers, Traitor of Mars. By the way, I'm Nolan. Oh yeah, I'm Nile. Uh, and we're going to do our typical spoiler-free review. Give you then give you a big old spoiler warning, so that you're properly good and warned, and then uh, we're gonna get more in depth into it. So unlike our other movie, this movie was only a one night event. Whoop! Yeah, turn down your phone. Yeah, yeah. I uh, know. So anyway, this uh, this movie is a one night event, so it's not we can't tell you to go see it in the theaters, but it should be hitting. Blu-ray and uh, streaming services pretty soon. Uh, I think they said in September, beginning of September. That's well, not too far off. Yep. So a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, I recommend it though. Yeah. So there's some like really cheesy and campy things in the story, particularly in some of the dialogue. But I think purposely so. Oh yeah. Yeah. I it's mean, it's all on purpose. Yeah, the squad that Rico tools around with, and is like he's training the squad, and it's like whoever was writing for the squad is a big fan of Red vs. Blue, because the kind of humor and jokes and just like level of screw up that they all were was very reminiscent of that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. And in fact, I leaned over to Niles. It is uh, Rico been in charge of the. The, the RBB guys now? Yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, it, so it's it appeals to me. I find that funny. I'm a big fan so yeah. of that, so, you know, it was funny to me. A lot of the, the humor in this was just the over-the-top, like, military machismo. Yeah. Just, like, this gung-ho, oorah, kill em all attitude that was uh, played for laughs, it seems like, or... Yeah. In a lot of ways. A lot of, uh, come on you apes and kill them all and you want to live forever and throw it in there. Yeah. But, uh, it was, uh, it was just a lot of fun to watch. It was. And, uh, the animation was pretty good. Yeah, it's the, so it's the same animation studio that did the previous Starship Troopers movie, which was Invasion. And the same, it's the same production company that did the Appleseed movie that came out last year. <laughs> If you saw that, and I uh, also did a Tekken movie recently, um, but it's really well animated. Um, before the movie played, since it's like a special Fathom event, before the movie played, they had a s couple of featurettes that I'm guessing will be on the Blu-ray. That and one of them was all about the production, the the production company in Japan showing their mocap work and them talking about like designing the armor. So that they could get cool poses, yeah, out of it and stuff. And uh, like one guy was saying, like he had to design it so that you could they could hold a rifle realistically. Yeah, because if it's too bulky, then they're holding it funny. Right. And he was like one of the guys was talking about that. He had like somebody who like knew what they were doing around guns. I guess he was saying that told him how to like it needs to be held. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was pretty interesting. They, they were talking about how they were really concerned about. Them being able to make cool military poses and stuff. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the suits, as far as their capability, is are reminiscent of the uh, Cap Trooper suits from the Roughneck Chronicles cartoon, in that they can use like the um, rocket boosters or jets or whatever to bounce. Uh, you know, jump. I mean. Long distances for jumping, but it's not flying, so sh jump short distances. Yeah. You know, a few hundred feet at a time. And, which, you know, comes from the book originally. So, I mean, in the, yeah, the armor was... Yeah, you talking about being on the bounce and... Right. And yeah. so the, the armor was really cool looking. The rifles they were using... I don't know. It could have been cooler. But the, all the weapon, like the special weapons they had, the missile launchers and the machine guns and stuff that they were using were all really cool looking. Yeah. Um, 
still using that like they they've changed the drop ship from what it was in the movies, but the all the capital ships are all still the same. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's, it's a very fun movie. It's well animated for what it is. Um, I'd rank it top of the sequels. <laughs> yes, it's the best. Of the, best of the four sequels. This best, is the fifth movie. Yes, this is Starship Troopers Five. It is the best of the four Starship Troopers sequels. Um, not better than Starship Troopers. And is that bug animation still holds up really well? You know what? I mean, the bugs looked really good in this. They did. There was a moment I was like, "Oh man!" Like these particle effects, like from the dust and everything blowing around, and yep, yeah, it looked really. The animation was really nice. Right for being for a production that's not a like big budget blockbuster. It's essentially movie. it's essentially straight to uh, Blu-ray, straight to video release. In America, but it's theatrical, like widespread theatrical release in Japan. Apparently, Starship Troopers is bigger in Japan than it is in America, according to this featurette, and all of the movies. Well, it was it was according to one of the slides before the. Before oh the yeah, movie. one of the slides before the movie, and all the movies got widespread theatrical releases in Japan, whereas only the original did in America, and then the rest were all straight to video. Right. Uh. Yeah, I, yeah. Apparently, Star Trek was just like really big, and then um, there's also something mentioned that um, like a lot of the giant robot anime designs come from the cover art from the Starship Troopers novel that was yeah published well, in the, Japan. This guy who's like, I guess the like the guy for mech animation in an anime in Japan. He got into that because he saw the cover of Starship Troopers, like the the book cover, in a store in Japan when he was a kid and thought it looked really cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it's all we can talk about before spoilers, right? There's not... We we enjoyed it. The yeah. animation was good. Go find a way to view it if you have the opportunity. Yep. All right, so spoiler warning. Yep. Uh, so the plot... Uh, it's not, like, simplistic, but we were kind of calling things ahead of time. Again, it's not, like, problematic. It's not like, oh, this pl- this story is so dumb, we can call everything a mile away. But, you know, we knew from the get-go that the the bugs on Mars were planted by the Sky Marshal because she wanted to make sure that Mars stayed within... Well, we were guessing they were going to, like, force Mars because Mars wants to secede. Right. And it was going to be her way of forcing Mars to stay within the Federation, but no, she just wanted to make an example of she, Mars. Right, she wanted to make an example of Mars of, you know, this is what happens when you... When, when you, you leave the Federation. Leave the Federation. Right, uh, we, we, I thought, I thought it was just going to be like, oh, now you need the Federation's help, so you're not going to want to leave the Federation. Right. But no, it was more insidious than that. But yeah, there's this whole, like, mentality of people... Of not even just like humans from Earth, it seems like just humans that aren't from Mars. That Mars is like this backwater hick planet, and then the Martians and they're they're very independent, right? And the the Martians are very independently spirited and stuff. In a lot of ways, it reminded me a lot of Gundam. In that way, because that's kind of the basis for like all the Gundam series. Mm. Except for that one that was all arena fights. That one's weird. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, but G yeah, Gundam? I think it was G Gundam. Yeah, I anyway. something. Like that. Anyway, but yeah, so it kind of reminded me of that in a lot of ways. You know, um, not quite to the point that the 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 Gundam shows got to, where you know Mars is in open revolt and like a full on bump the mic, a full on uh, rebellion against the Earth. But I kind of felt like based off of. Like some of the attitudes of the people on Mars, and then some of the uh, the news feeds because they intersperse these news feeds just like in the original movie. Uh, that I, I felt that the the writer, I forget his name, he wrote, he's written like all the movies. Yep. Um, he was trying to capture like Mars is kind of like the new America, right? Almost that like independent American spirit. I think I feel like that was kind of what he was trying to capture, uh, but it was a little. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
Over the top? Nah, yeah, kind of. Heavy-handed? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can see that, I guess. Um, but then there's a, there's a lot of uh, propaganda stuff that was really over the top in this. Some was really funny, though. Yeah. It was, it was all really over the top in a very funny and satirical way. Yeah. Um, and just, like, news broadcasts with people calling in. You know, but they're saying why they should Q bomb Mars and whatnot. Um, and yeah. then, but yeah, I mean, ult- so ultimately, Carl knew all this was going on and is apparently re- was apparently responsible for Rico getting stationed on Mars in the first place. Yeah, Rico, something happened. Rico got demoted and stationed on Mars, which is away from the front. It's kind of backwater. It's a shit post. Yep, nothing. It's boring and nothing happens. And then on top of that, the troops he has to train are terrible. Yeah. So he's going nuts. So Carl, but Carl had Rico put there because he was going to need him um, to save Mars. And then he gets Carmen to fly back and provide assistance. Yeah, because the rest of the fleet is going into the quarantine zone to attack. Uh, for a big offensive against the uh, the Arachnids. Right, which is, goes about as well as the Clendathu invasion did. Yeah, you'd think they'd learned. It was like five years after the movie is supposed to be or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. You'd... Or, no, it was more than that. I think they, I think it's like 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. I don't know. It was we... five years since... Invasion? Uh, yeah, Invasion or Marauder. Okay. One of those, and then it's been like 20 years since the first film... All right, or something. Well, yeah, it's I don't know. you know they the invasion doesn't go well there. Um, yeah, it goes about as well as Big K did. So apparently, yeah. whatever planet they attacked was a dark planet, a bug planet, a planet completely hostile towards. How'd it go? I don't remember. Something it's like that. Been right? A long time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they, uh, she comes back in the nick time, saves the day, uh, they foil the, uh, Sky Marshal's plan, uh, yep. and then something, like, people, know, um, Dizzy is in this movie, but people are wondering, she's supposed to be dead, and what is, Rico's wandering the Martian outback, Carl... Through his psychic powers, causes this hallucination of Dizzy in order to, like, push him on to where he needs to go. Yep. She's, like, giving him the... Which makes it really creepy. Oh, when she starts when she flirting start, with... When she starts flirting with him and talking about that night in the tent, how he was everything she had ever wanted and all this. And you, just, you take a step back and you're just like, this is Carl yeah, talking. Yeah, this is Carl talking. Which makes this really weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway... Yeah, and so they, yeah, they foil the plans to blow up Mars, save the day, and then the last shot of the movie is um, the fleet above Mars to retake Mars, right? Like yeah. commencing their drop to retake Mars, and uh, yeah, and then the uh, the squad got good. Yeah, got by the end, the end of it, and um, yeah, yep. There's. <laughs> What was that line? Like the the one, like the lieutenant's like, who's like a a worse lieutenant than than Gorman from yeah. Star from Aliens, worse lieutenant than Gorman. He's just like absolute. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he says something like, uh, "Like I'm not dying today. I got to go home or something like that." And Rico's like, "Oh, get that tattoo to my ass." Yeah. <laughs> you like, could maybe you could find my bubble injury after all. Yeah, it's like. There's no Martians in my mobile infantry. There's just soldiers who follow orders. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was an amusing movie. I mean, it's more cheesy and campy than the original. More cheesy and campy than the third one, which is hard to accomplish, but they did it. Uh huh. Um, pretty easy in the fourth. The fourth one was like just so serious. Yeah. From what I remember, I only seen it once. Yeah, as I recall, but I remember being really serious. 
Uh, yeah, this one though, like it brings back those news segments, which are all like just fun to watch and really silly and over the top. Yep. So. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think that's about all we can say about this movie. Um, go find a way to watch it. Definitely. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, so later this week, uh, we're going to be reviewing Logan Lucky. Yes. Which uh, apparently did not do well at the box office this weekend. Uh, that's too bad. It got, um, I think from what I had heard, it got, it was basically one of the highest reviewed movies of this week. Yeah. And then Hitman's Bodyguard, which we liked and uh, people really liked, did not do very well with critics, but it apparently did really well at the box office. Yeah. So, people well, like Ryan Reynolds right now, so. Yep, and Sam Jackson always draws people. Yep. Yeah, so Logan Lucky, later this week, not going to be streaming on Sunday. Uh, streaming on Twitch. And everything underscore is underscore bad periodically. Um, yeah, so until our Logan Lucky review, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for listening. You want to live forever? Yes, please. Do we get a choice? <laughs> Do I? Can I choose? Is that an option? To live <laughs> forever? Because I choose that. <laughs>